Are we about to see some tasty vengeance? I do wonder, because of course we have recently watched Matisse and Ayagaz face off against each other. That was the Russ HRE game in which, uh, not to spoil it, but maybe a certain Roost player won. Aha, I haven't told you who though, so go watch that video if you haven't already. But yes, these guys have recently faced off against each other. It was quite a fun back and forth match. And this one, this has the potential for that. We've got England versus Mongols. And I know what you're thinking already. No, KP, don't. Ah, just don't be an idiot. I mean, it's, it's Mongols, right? How is England going to compete? But I feel like some people have been getting very good at finding ways to kind of eco-boom with England. It's still a very one-dimensional sieve in my eyes. but And I, I won't say it's like it's anywhere near comparative to the eco-booming or the TC boom I'm seeing out of other sieves. But there are... There are these attempts to expand what they can do, right? Because I think a lot of people looked, they got they got tired very quickly of just doing the same opening of longbow spamming into ram rush and you either win or lose on that. And they've started to explore different ways of winning. And we'll see if that's what Guz does. Or if it is just going to be your classic me go longbow and ram, me win or lose game at 15 minutes. Ugug. I do like the longbow, uh, the longbowman in this game though, I will say. When you think about what Mongols do in the early game, like while your longbowman costs more, uh, Mongols have this tendency to go for Spearman or Magadai. The Horsemen are usually a reactionary build, but given that he is up against England, I wouldn't be against seeing Horsemen early. And it's going to be interesting to see who reads those kind of teetotters better, right? Like, Gus should be kind of theory facting this in his head as well, right? Where he's like, oh, yeah, I, you know, if I look at recent Mongol games, I know that Mongols like to go for. X or Y, but am I being baited because I'm playing England and everyone knows when you play England, you're going to go for Longbowman, so should I get an early Rax and have Spears coming out at a good rate to counter out Horseman, which would be the great counter to my... Like, you see how this goes, right? Like, there's always that kind of... That thought process. Like, good players are thinking 10 steps ahead. That's why we always talk about Viper as a great example of, like, he has this anticipatory approach to his, his macro game where he usually is pivoting into a new unit type before his opponent even gets the counter on the field to the previous one. And that's where Scout and Vision will come into the equation. Um, right now, I think they're both playing off one Scout. I might be wrong. No, no, I'm right. So there's been no attempt to get additional Scouts. There's been no attempt to build a stable yet coming out uh, from Matisse. Because remember, he is playing as the Mongols. They are the faction that's able to do that in the first age, in the darkest of ages. While England, to do a comparative, would have to wait into Feudal. Not that I've really ever watched England so far in a top 100 game build stable any time before tech free. And surprise, surprise, it's a council. Who would have, you know, I could have never seen this coming, folks. It's not like if we were to pull up data, 99.9% .9 of the games involve England players building council hall and the 0.1% that aren't are just misclicks. This is going to get reworked in some way. The thing is, I don't, like, given the, the rates England has and how underwhelming in a lot of ways they're, they're starting to be now that people have started to kind of flesh out the way they play these different sieves and counter what England does, I feel like England's going to need a buff to the other landmark. I don't think Council Hall should necessarily get nerfed. Don't get me wrong, Council Hall is, is a great saving, right? We talked about this here in previous games about how you save uh, 300 wood, essentially, right? To get your Longbowman you know, quicker uh, without having because otherwise you'd have to invest in two archery ranges for comparison uh, comparative rates right and that's why you're able to go in the barracks instead but we've got comparatives like that across the board right think about the money saved on building a temple in the castle age i know it's castle age instead but obviously there's additional benefits there or think about the clock tower for china once again it's castle age but there's additional benefits there with 50 percent extra health uh i don't think this is like the most busted thing in the world it's the same as like when you think of France. I don't think the cow like the the cavalry production speed is the issue with France's feudal age upgrade, right? Their landmark, the issue more comes in than anything. It's like the the numbers need to be adjusted on how spears and crossbowmen damage knights, and also I still think chivalry should not be a tech to research. But I wouldn't say the fact they produce faster is the problem. Same as I wouldn't say it is for, for England, which we're going to see right now. As guys already up into the feudal age. Deerstone getting close to complete for Matisse, but Matisse so far has no defensive units, has no outposts, has nothing to protect him from Lombowman. And you're playing against England, folks. I don't want to say sound like a Debbie Downer here, but that may be what we call a, a derper of a play, or a dangerous one at least. 
That being said, one thing we have to highlight is long bowmen are slow, right? 1.12 movement speed per tile. They take ages to get across the map. Honestly, like, if we took their bow away and we gave a long bowman and a monk a knife, I'm pretty sure that the, the monk would win. And I'm not talking warrior monks. I'm talking like, screw it, just give a prelate a knife. I'm pretty sure the long bowman gets shipped to death in that situation. He definitely wouldn't be able to run away. So I'm trying to think. I think it's is it one movement speed for monks, so he'd barely get away. But it's a prelate, so movement speed, <laughs> infantry research, zoom zoom. Anyway, archer range is being built. Ooh, ooh, can he stop this? No, he won't be able to stop it in time. Now this is problematic because remember this is next to the Uvu, so he can now outnumber the longbowman quickly because he's going to be producing two out of each of these. So that's an immediate retreat out of guys. Because remember, everything he's doing is countered. And this is what I was talking about with England, right? They're predictable. Even though Matisse is slow to get these military buildings down, you can, for a start, as Mongols do this, this way, because obviously you can produce tunes, which is sore. And more importantly, you know that the, the Lombo Rush is a trivial name for what it actually is, because it takes so long to arrive. That being said, Matisse jumps the gun. Way too quickly to run out there. So you have to respect the campfires. I don't think he was anticipating it was researched that quickly. But we can see it actually already did get, you know, taken out. That, that's why the Lombowman didn't continue to trickle in, by the way. Matisse maybe should have been a slightly wise to it in that regard. But doesn't lose too many units for his trouble. I think he only lost one archer and a little bit of damage on another in the end. But he's going to have to wait for that critical mass now, right? Because if you try and run in against the campfire, yes, you will slowly still snipe down these Lombowman, but you will lose additional units in comparison. And I believe, yeah, Blacksmith Research is the other thing. So... We should see Steeled Arrows coming out very soon for Gus. Uh, Matisse hasn't got a Blacksmith yet. Yeah, okay, he has now put it down. But he hasn't researched it yet. Really important to get this as quickly as possible. When you're playing against England, it's just you could potentially get Steeled Arrows yourself. I think you just always get Iron Undermesh. Like, because, of course, they have the range advantage. And what does England do in the early game? They don't melee. They just ranged attack. And that ranged attack is becoming a nuisance. I think this is the power of England when you don't play it too regularly, right? Like, Matisse probably hasn't had to deal with too much England the last week or so. So it's hard to remember how ridiculous the range is. For the fact that they just reached in there and sniped out a villager that easily. Like, that type of detail is easily overlooked. Uh, Matisse? Matisse has a... Okay, they're moving now. I was about to say, a lot of idle villagers here. Speaking of villager count, Matisse actually up at 26 right now. And Gus up at 28. Courtesy of just sniping out like that. So he's got to be really careful. He's definitely going to have to play a tight formation because... Like we mentioned, you know, if you ever are able to run down the Lombowman army, you will kill them. But they have that juicy extra reach that means that they can easily catch you off guard even close to your TC as a protection point. And that's why I like this move out of Matisse. Just moving the Deer Stone. We talked about how slow Lombowman are, right? Now, 1.44 movement speed for these archers. So the moment you outnumber him, you'll be able to run him down. Not to mention you're able to gap close quicker, which is very important. And it's why he's instead going for Steeled Arrows instead of going for the Iron Undermesh. Is he, he's confident now that if he keeps the, the Yam speed, when he engages like this, he'll close rank quick enough that he maybe only tanks one salvo of arrows before he's in range. And still no diversification yet. Not that I'm too surprised when you're playing England, right? Khan, just about able to get away. One more volley would have taken him out. Now the question is whether you, whether you actually try to go for a tech up and stick on this amount. Or if you just continue all in on the, the Longbowman. I got a feeling it's going to be more Longbowman though. He's still producing them. So really putting himself in a situation where he has to win now. Or just indefinitely loses. And the problem he has is this. Look, look how many archers there are. And they're chasing in right now. They've got the arm speed movement. Matisse. Number advantage in his favor. One man arms out. I like this attempt by guys. But one is not going to be good enough. And the Longbowman are just going to be slaughtered by the archers here. You can see that the campfire is helping out somewhat, is delaying this. The Man at Arms is now going to be sniped out. And this should just be where he plows through the rest of these longbowmen. They at least snipe out the Khan. Trying to get rid of that movement speed buff in an additional fight that could come up after this. But a big advantage now for Matisse. As, I mean, how many did he lose in the end? Maybe half of the archers to get rid of all the longbowmen here? Definitely a worthwhile trade for Matisse. And now he can push into the enemy's base. I love this attempt by Gus to pivot, right? Into man arms, knowing he sees as many archers. It's just too slow and too late. And I have to agree with, with what I've been seeing some other people kind of say. I think we, I, some people were uh, discussing this in the comments on the videos, actually. And it's, it's a fair thing to raise. In a lot of ways, man arms actually feels like a bait. The 100 food, 20 gold for what they are... 
Mana Arms do, in a lot of ways, feel like a bait type unit. It's eight damage, a hundred health. Not the best resistance to ranged, really. Like, it's decent, right? It'll last a while against these archers. But the price you're paying for how quickly they can potentially be sniped out, and the time it takes you to get the, to the quantity required for it to be lethal. I think what I'm getting at at the end of the day here is that why build this when you could build Horseman? And I think that is a very fair question to ask, and I haven't seen a good answer against it, right? Like, yeah, when you upgrade them, they'll be great. When you get into like the early man arms, they'll start to actually be pretty spicy, pretty potent. But right now, this is about Guz playing into this this feudal age time, right? It's not like he's thinking too far ahead in the castle age because he wants to keep that pressure on. That's the whole point of England is they really play hard into that feudal age. One thing I will highlight on that last fight, by the way, and it was a big mistake from Guz, is considering he knew he had a slight villager advantage because he sniped one or two out, he could have afforded to have sent one across map to build an outpost. And I think that's an important detail to highlight, right? The extra 25% attack speed probably would have brought Matisse down to under 10 archers, I think. I think Matisse would still have won there, but it would have been more of a Pyrrhic victory than an emphatic one. Long line formation as well. Don't really see the line formation used that often. It is very good, though. Keep in mind that... You as the England player, you just want to min-max the range at which you engage with those longbows additional range. And considering they're slow at running away, it means that like you are less likely to get peppered in the face by arrows in the chase down. At least you're going to get peppered soon, uh, uh, slower and later. And this wraparound, by the way. Matisse is going to find an expansion unguarded. So Gus never put down outposts here. Another big mistake here. I feel like Gus hasn't really been playing around outposts. He's only got this one defensive outpost. And Honestly, like we've talked about this before, if you want to play England, you have to you have to trail mix this, right? You have to slowly just build your way across the map. Think about what Mongols do with their outposts, but it's even more important for you because it plays so heavily into your, your strategy of the Longbowman. Which, by the way, the Longbowman is sniping out a lot of these archers right now. And the line move was so good here because, look, there's no escape route for Matisse. So he just has to engage because he knows he's going to lose this army. Well, the campfires do go down. This is going to delay him. The man arms will move in. I believe that was the attack speed buff coming out. Matisse is going to try and get what he can, but with the man arms on him and the longbowman as well, I think Matisse's army is going to get traded out. And they're trying to retreat away now, but with the man arms right on their tail, there's no easy way to get away from this. They're basically the same movement speed almost. Slight advantage to the archers, of course, with the man arms 1.12. So you will get them out in the end, but definitely an advantage a trade for Igars there. And he might even get a few more on the way out. Yep. Number one. I think you can get in range for it. Yep. These di these directional switches are costing Matisse so many additional units, by the way. Every time he changes direction, they pivot in their formation, and one of them gets exposed to the incoming fire. This <laughs> is such a slow and silly chase to watch. So the Man Arms are going to back off now. Contempt what they've done. This is why I always said Man Arms usually feel rough to do, right? Like, they were actually effective there, but it wasn't actually about the Man Arms. I would say that was 100% the line formation that done that work. If it wasn't for the line formation move from Guz, I think there's maybe a situation where Tease just turns on you and snipes out a lot of your archers in that situation, right? The Man Arms is simply a distraction, a cannon fodder type unit. The only reason he never went for Horsemen is because what we've highlighted time and time again is whenever you play as England, you're very woodcapped because of this production rate on the longbow and costing 50 wood each, right? And producing it twice the rate. So it's very hard to justify getting another 150 wood military building to then build into Horsemen. If he could have afforded it or if he hadn't put his racks down already, I think that would have been the difference in this game. But really solid play by, by Igaz to actually balance the man at arms. And now they can find some value when you move across in the base if you want to start raising buildings, right? That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes to the Baron Ram. He could just save up the wood now. It looks like he's almost got enough for it. Has there been a tech up attempt? The Matisse? No. Nothing from Matisse. So, it, okay, here, yeah, okay, there it was at the back. So, but it's going to be spot. Oh, no. Oh, we've seen this before. And it's never pretty when this happens to the Mongol player. He has to back away from his tech up. Guz with the quick move in, but the Longbowmen are engaged. The campfires are making the difference here. 20 to the 17, so Gus has the advantage, and he's going to push it. Meanwhile, the Baton Ram being built up by the Man at Arms, and I think this Archer Army is getting spent. It's taken a decent amount of Longbowmen with it, though. I wonder if Gus made a mistake in continuing to build the Baton Ram instead of pulling these Man at Arms in. He's going to do it now, but it's too late. So his army is pretty much rinsed. He did at least slow down the step readout construction, but the Archers were able to back up. Remember, they get that Yam Speed buff off the Deer Stone. 
So now it's a tough situation for Gaz. Gaz just kind of threw his lead. All because he was being greedy with the Baron Ram construction. And he will stay by a decent amount still. Remember, he's still getting the heals from the campfire, but there's no doubt in the fact that Matisse still has the number advantage here. He just seems hesitant to push it. Which is odd. I feel like he just has to snipe these out right now. Man at Arms getting on top of him, though. I think he waited too long. Now the Man at Arms are in between him and the Archer line, he can no longer assault this. And with the Baron Ram up, I don't know what Matisse can do anymore. Guys. Despite what looked like a wonky decision to go for the Baron Ram to continue to destruct with the Man at Arms, it's paid off because now Matisse, he cannot complete his tech up. He's only got one villager working on it. And he only has archers to counter this out, which means he has no solution to the Baron Ram. And with the long moment still coming in, I think Matisse might just be done here. Like, what do you do? Your step read out is going to be sniped out now. They see the final villager working on it, so that's not going to happen. And once that happens, I think that's the moment he GG's. I think he was hoping for the stealth tech up. But the moment that gets interrupted completely, the game is over and the Longbowman spam wins in the end. And a really cool switch over. Really nice moves out of Gus. I feel like no one really uses, like, uh, utilizes the man at arms. We talked about the problem with it, right? We talked about why it's weak and why it can feel wonky. But given the situation, given the way he utilized it, and especially the use of the line formation, I think that was the turning point. I definitely think Gus could have played this better still. I think if he'd played more heavily into the idea of, of Horseman, right? If he hadn't actually already invested in the barracks, it's possible that he makes this game look even cleaner and easier. But good pivot to go for the man at arms. I think most people in that situation get stuck and they continue to double down on Longbowman and Spearman. Real, and what you got to realize in that situation is when you're up against, especially a Mongol type player with double archer range on a Renuvu, they're going to outnumber you on the archer front. The Spearman are counted out by the archers, so you need something else in the mix. And that's usually what trips up England players because they don't have the wood surplus to transition with more military buildings. And that is where Mana Arms can be valid. I think it's a very niche strategy. I don't expect to see it too often from England, but when you're backed into a corner in terms of your selection like that, it is most definitely the right call.